Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. I recently received this pen in the post. It came in an envelope, obviously, but I thought, well, I'll take it out of the envelope because we all know what it's like when you take something out of one of those. This is the Moon Man or Mahjong A1. Join me down on the mat. We'll take a look at this pen. We'll look at some ink I'm going to put in it. I'll do a writing sample. Then I'll give you my first impressions of the Marjon A1. So let's fetch in the pen. Here it comes. This is the Marjon A1. This is in this gorgeous blue colour. It only comes in this bag, so there was no bots associated with this one. Let's pull this out. I'll fetch in my pen stand. And let's pop the pen down. I'm putting it this way because down here, that's where the actual nib comes from. I like the look of this pen. It looks really nice. There's no clip. All we've got is up here, we've got this little tiny roll stop. But we've got this gorgeous blue colour. Turning it around, we've got the words Moon Man there, so it's still not fully rebranded from Moon Man to Marjon. Let's take a quick look through the body. So... Starting at the opposite end of what I normally do, we've got this long, I'm going to call it a thing, I'm very good at describing items, aren't I? But essentially this is the clicker, so if I press this down, the nib comes out, and then click it, the nib goes in. Nice and simple mechanism. We come from there into a silver band, which tapers up until we come to the blue body. The blue body, and that's a little bit of a tongue twister, that comes up, as I said, to this roll stop. And it's tapering out until about halfway down that roll stop. And then it goes straight till we come to this silver band. This band got a little bit of decoration on it. As I say below that, we've got Moon Man. Coming to the second part of the body, so this goes all the way down till we've got another silver section here and that tapers down quite sharply till we come to the place where the nib comes out now i'm not sure if you'll be able to see this on the camera let me just move my focal point there we go so this is where the actual work happens and what i'm going to do is just press down the pen up pops the nib locks in place press it down again and that pops back nice easy mechanism I'm looking forward to trying this. I've never had a fountain pen like this before. Let's see what's inside. So I'm going to twist to take the top off. There we go. So easing out, this is the actual mechanism. So you can see there the nib, fairly plain nib. Let's just take a closer look at that. On there we've got the word Moon Man and we've got EF for extra fine. This is an extra fine nib, that's all I could find it in. Personally, I would have preferred a wider nib, but I want to try this pen, I've been really looking forward to trying this pen for a long time. Next thing we're going to take a look at is on here, we've got this shiny silver section here, that just pulls out, that reveals a cartridge, which is empty. What I'm going to do is fetch in this package now. This was also in the bag, We've got some Chinese writing there. I'm just going to see if I can peel that off. No, in fact, I'll leave it. If I turn it over, you can see we've got a couple more cartridges, which have got seals on them, which I think is a good idea. A pipette and a converter. Let me just open this up. I'm actually going to pull out the converter. There we go. And Pop that cartridge back. I want to use this as a converter pen, so best to have the converter in it, isn't it? So the converter, very stiff. Once it's going, it's fine, but it was just stiff to get moving. We've got some words on there. And that's Moon Man currently on there as well. So hopefully this should now sniff. There we go. That's nice and comfy in there. One thing I will say before I go any further with this, obviously the mechanism, it covers up most of that converter, which means I've only got a little tiny window here. So if I want to see how much ink is in here, it's going to be quite difficult. Let's pop this 
back in and this does not want to go over so i'm assuming if you're going to use this with this converter you don't need a cover let's pop the pen back together again so this is going to be fun one second so i've just taken this off camera because <laughs> As you saw on camera, I was struggling to put it back together. What you need to do is make sure you line that nib up. Otherwise, it's hitting against the bottom of the pen and it's not going to go through and let you close the pen up. Once I lined it up, you know, that's quite a nice and quite easy. Let's do some size comparisons. Let's just move this out of the way. So that way I'll pop that back in the middle. First two pens, these are standard pens I use for my size comparisons. We've got a Pilot Metropolitan and a Lamy Safari. So I'm just lining the tops up for the minute. The Metropolitan, yes, slightly shorter, but overall, to be honest, I think they're very similar sizes. Let's have a look at the nibs. This is going to be a bit of a strange comparison, isn't it? Because they're very different pens. I, I do like that click out. It's really satisfying as well. I'm going to line up the top of the nibs. So unposted the Lamy Safari, let me turn that around so we can actually see the nib. There we go. The Lamy Safari and the Metropolitan are a lot shorter. Let's post these other two pens just so we can see posted what it's like. Now I don't normally use my pens posted, so this is, for me, it's just a little bit of an unusual way to look at it. But posted, that Majon a lot smaller. As I say though, I don't normally post them, so it's a little bit of a moot issue for me. I'm going to swap over now and fetch in a couple of different pens. So we'll start with these posted. The two pens I've brought in, I've brought in the, the white one, which is a Pen BBS 456, and that cost me 57 Australian dollars. I also brought in the Moonman M800 with a bot nib, and that cost me 66 Australian dollars. The Moon Man, the Marjon A1, costs 59 Australian dollars. So these pens, they're pens that are in roughly the same price bracket. So as we can see posted, still that massive size difference. Let's take the ends off though and look at them how I would normally use this. There we go. Make sure we line up the nibs. So unposted, the A1, ever so slightly longer. Not a lot longer though. One of the things that I need to work out how I'm going to get around this, I hold my pens down near the bottom of the section. This has got a small nib at the bottom of the section there. Let me just turn that around so we can hopefully see that better on the camera. So I'm going to be interested to see where I end up holding this pen. Am I still going to be down near the bottom of the section or will I be holding it a little bit further up? Let's pop the caps on. So with the cap on, I've got to be honest, all these pens are very similar in the terms of length. I've watched a number of other reviews about the Marjon A1 and a lot of them are saying that it's essentially a clone of a Pilot Vanishing Point. I can't comment on that. I don't have a Pilot Vanishing Point to compare it against. So I'm just going to accept what they're saying. But the price of this is so much cheaper than getting that Vanishing Point. Albeit, yes, the Vanishing Point comes with a gold nib. Where is this is steel? I'm just going to step away from the desk. I'm going to give the pen a clean. When I come back, we'll take a look at the ink, we'll do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. The pen's now been cleaned out. The ink that I'm going to use, well, it's an extra fine nib and it's a blue pen. So I thought, well, what I'd like is a nice dark blue ink. So what I'm going to do is put in Diamine Oxford Blue. Really nice dark blue ink. As we can see here, you know, yes, where it's got a little bit less on there, we've got a little bit of lightness coming through. And I'm guessing that's what this ink will look like when I'm writing with it. Yeah, it's an extra fine nib. And I thought by having the dark blue, hopefully it'll give a nice line that's nice and easy to read. Let's take that out of the way. I'll just fetch in my dragon. That's today's ink holder. I'll remove my nut because that's what I use when I'm using samples. So here's the ink, Oxford blue. In that goes. So to fill this, I need to dismantle the pen. 
make sure that the plunge is all the way down and in it goes this is going to be a really good pen to use when i'm filling from sample pots because it's so nice and thin so that's once on the converter and taking it all the way down again and fetch it back up and hopefully that gives us a nice fill just wipe off the nib so hopefully we can see here where we've got a little bit of plastic showing we've got some ink in there let's pop this together again so get this lined up correctly that looks about right in it goes yep that's catching and kicking it back out there we go <laughs> it's very springy right let's pop the top back on pop that down and get rid of this bottle of ink before I knock it all over the place. So let's fetch in the notepad. This is the standard notepad that I use for my writing tests. It's a black and red A5 notebook and it's using the Oxford Optic paper, which is a really nice fountain pen friendly paper. Let's do some writing. So we'll click it first. I love this click. So here we've got Marjon A1 with an extra fine nib and as I said 59 Australian dollars I will say so far this is beautiful to write with my fingers aren't going right down near the bottom they're actually more near the top of the section so I can feel where the section goes into the body there is a little bit of a lip there but when i'm writing it's so smooth the ink dye mine oxford blue this is just gliding over the paper for an extra fine nib wow this is so nice wetness tests immediate 10 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds and that's nice and dry. I'm going to move the mic so you can hear the pen right. And I've already said this, oh, it's a joy to write with. I'm going to test to see if there's any line variation. I don't expect to see any, but we'll try it anyway. So there's no pressure. I'm just adding a little bit of pressure. And then we've got some pressures on the downstrokes. But yeah, no line variation. Didn't expect to see any. And then I'm going to do this scribble. This is something I do normally in my Tomoe River paper. But it's just really to see how well the flow keeps up when I'm essentially writing fast. I'm not a fast writer, so this is the best I can do to try and simulate it. That keeps up so nice. Let's pop the nib away. <laughs> I love it. I know, little things please. Little minds, don't they? There you are. Let me just stand that up. That was so nice. I really enjoyed writing with this pen. It does feel a little bit awkward. As I say, where I'm holding the pen... It doesn't feel how I would normally hold a pen. So that's going to take a little bit of getting used to. It feels, yeah, awkward's the best way to describe it when I'm writing. But not awkward as in really uncomfortable, just unusual. I absolutely love this pen. I love the looks of it. I love the fact it's blue. Virtually all the reviews I've seen, they've only had black ones. And that's why I haven't actually bought one up till now because I didn't want a black pen. And when this came out in blue, I thought, yeah, let's get that. For $59, I think it's really good value. It's such a smooth nib. It really is. It feels like it's gliding. It's almost like writing on ice. Not quite. Not much feedback. I'm not sure how I feel about that because I personally like a little bit of feedback when I'm writing. But 
it's not enough to put me off the pen. It looks nice. As I say, feels awkward in the hand. The key thing is, it writes nice. Now, yes, I know I've got this dark blue in here at the moment. I might try this with some different colored inks. Now I've seen how it's working. Yes, it is a thin line. Yes, it's an extra fine nib, but it's certainly putting down a nice amount of ink. So this, it's my first impression of the Marjom A1. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on this pen? Have you got one of these and a vanishing point? I'd love to know what people think of a comparison between the two of them. I mean, one of the things I like with getting these cheaper pens is it's often an entryway for me to get the more expensive version that it's actually based on. So please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment. Well, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.